Ares, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise, its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life, new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Come out! Pay no attention to the girl behind the curtain. I said out! <sighs> Alright, I give up. Now what? What are you doing here? Why did you stow away on this EDS vessel? I wanted to see my brother. He's with the government survey crew on Woden. I haven't seen him in ten years, not since he left for Earth to go into government survey work. What was your destination on the Stardust? Mimir, I have a position waiting for me there. My brother has been sending money home to us all this time. Oh, my father, my mother, and me. And he paid for a special course in linguistics I was taking. I graduated sooner than I expected and was offered a job on Mimir. I knew it would be almost a year before Jerry's job was done on Woden, so he could come to Mimir, and that's just why I hid here in this closet. There was plenty of room for me, and I was willing to pay the fine. There were no other kids, just us, uh, Jerry and me, and I haven't seen him for so long. I didn't want to wait another year when I could see him now, even though I knew it would be breaking some kind of regulation when I did. Does your brother know that you took passage on the Stardust from Mimir? Oh yes, I sent him a spacegram telling him about my graduation and about going to Mimir on the Stardust a month before I left for Earth. I already knew Mimir was where he's going to be stationed in a little over a year. He gets a promotion then, and he'll be based on Mimir and not have to stay out a year at a time on trips like he does now. What's his name? Cross? Jerry Cross. He's in Group 2. That's what his address says anyway. Do you know him? No, I've never met him. We're going really fast now, aren't we? Why is it doing that? To save fuel for a little while. You mean we don't have very much? Uh, how did you manage to stow away? I just sort of walked in when no one was looking my way. It was really easy. Didn't you read the signs? Uh, no. I guess I must have missed it. Uh, did you know what the supplies were that the survey crew ordered? Uh, no. Equipment for their work, I supposed. Stardust, identify yourself and proceed. Barton, EDS 34GII, this is an emergency. Give me Commander Delhart. Are they coming back for me? So I won't get to see my brother after all? Barton? What's this about an emergency? A stowaway. Stowaway? That's rather unusual. But why the emergency call? You discovered him in time, so there should be no appreciable danger. And I presume you've informed ship's records, so his nearest relatives can be notified. That's why I had to call you first. The stowaway is still aboard, and the circumstances are so... different. Different? How can they be different? You know you have a limited supply of fuel. And you also know the law as well as I do. Any stowaway discovered in an EDS shall be jettisoned immediately following discovery. What does he mean? The stowaway is a girl. What? She wanted to see her brother. She's only a stupid kid, and she didn't know what she was doing. I see. So, you called me in the hope that I could do something. I'm sorry. I can do nothing. This cruiser must maintain its schedule. The life of not only one person, but the lives of many, depend on it. I know how you feel, but I'm dependent on you. I know how you feel, but I'm powerless to help you. You'll have to go through with it. I'll have you connected to ship's records. What does he mean, go through with it? To jettison me? To go through with it? What does he mean? Not the way he sounded it. He couldn't have. Yup, like a goldfish down a toilet. No! It'll have to be. No, you're joking. You're insane. You can't mean it. Yeah, I was joking. Oh, good. No, but not really. We're going to have to jettison you. What? But... I'm sorry. I should have told you before. I should have, but I had to do what I could first. I had to call the Stardust. You heard what the commander said. But you can't. If you make me leave the ship, I'll die. Yeah, pretty much. You know... I know. It has to be like that. You mean... You really mean it. You're gonna do it. You're gonna make me die? I'm sorry. It has to be that way. And no human in the universe can change it. Yes, this is ship's records. Give us all information on the subject's identification disk. I'm going to need to see your identification disk. Okay. N number TA374-Y54. Name Marilyn Lee Cross. Sex, female. 
Born July 7th, 2160. Only 18? Jeez, fucking freshman. Height, 5'3", weight... Oh, no one needs to know about that. I'll call you later. They're waiting for you to kill me, aren't they? They want me dead, don't they? You and everyone else on this cruiser wants me dead, don't you? Well, yeah, but it's not the way you think. It isn't that way at all. Nobody wants it this way. No one would ever let it be this way if it wasn't humanly possible to change it. Why is it then? I don't understand. Why is it? This ship is carrying Call of Fever Syndrome to Group 1 on Woden. Their own supply was destroyed by a tornado. Group 2, the crew your brother is in, is 8,000 miles away across the west western sea. And their helicopters can't cross it to reach Group 1. The fever is invariably fatal unless the serum can be had in time. And the six men in Group 1 will die unless the ship reaches them on schedule. These ships are barely given enough fuel to reach their destination. And if you stay aboard, your fat ass will cause this ship to smash into a million little pieces on the planet's surface. Is that it? Just the ship doesn't have enough fuel? Yup. I can go alone, or I can take seven others with me. Is that the way it is? That's the way it is. Then maybe... Are you sure nothing can be done about it? Would people help me if they could? Yeah, sure, why not? And it won't come back. But there might be other cruisers, might there? Isn't there any hope at all that m there might be someone, somewhere, who could do something to help no! me? No! You're sure. You know you're sure. I'm sure. There are no other cruisers within 40 light years. There is nothing no one can do to change this. How long can I stay? Barton, a check with records shows you haven't completed your report yet. Did you reduce the deceleration? I'm decelerating at point 10. I cut the deceleration at 1750. And the weight is 110. Fat ass. Mm. I would like to stay at point 10 as long as the computers say I can. Will you give them the question? I'll, I'll have that given to the computers. You will resume deceleration at 1910. Is that when I, when I go? I'll have the course correction given to you. Ordinarily, I wouldn't permit anything like this, but I understand your position. There is nothing I can do other than what I just did and you will not deviate from these new instructions. You will complete your report at 1910. Now, here are the course corrections. So, that's the way it has to be with me? You understand now, don't you? No one would ever let it be like this if it could be changed. How could it happen to me so terribly quickly? An hour ago, I was on the Stardust, going to Mimir. Now the Stardust is going on without me. And I'm going to die, and I'll never see Jerry or Mom or your Daddy again. I'll never see anything again. It's different here. It isn't like it's like it is back on Earth. It isn't that no one cares. It's that no one can do anything to help. The frontier is big, and here along its rim, the colonies and exploration parties are so scattered and thin and far between. On Woken, for example, there are only 16 men. 16 men on an entire world. The exploration parties, the survey crews, the first little colonies... They're all fighting alien environments, trying to make a way for those who will follow after. The environments fight back, and those who go first usually make mistakes only once. Like walking into your parents' bedroom without knocking, while they're having mommy daddy sheep monster time. That's a mistake you only make once. Could I write a letter? I want to write a letter to mom and daddy. And I'd like to talk to Jerry. Could you let me talk to him on the radio over there? I'll try to get him. Hello? How's it going with you fellows now? Is the EDS on its way? This isn't Group 1. This is the EDS. Is Jerry Cross there? Jerry? Jerry? Oh no, he went out this morning and he hasn't come back yet. Can you connect me through to the radio in the copter? It's broken. Is there something important? Bad news for him or something? Yes, it's very important. When he comes in, get him to the transmitter as soon as you possibly can. Okie dokie. Anything else? No, I guess not. Get him here as soon as you can, and say It seems to move faster and faster all the time, doesn't it? Do you think Jerry will come back to camp in time? I think so. They said he should be in right away. I hope he does. I feel sick and scared, and I want to hear his voice again, and maybe I won't feel so alone. I'm a coward, and I can't help it. Yeah, but anyone would be afraid of being stranded in space. Their eyes being sucked out of their sockets, blood boiling in their veins... 
the breath being forcibly expelled from your lungs. Is it the same with Jerry? I mean, if he could make a mistake, would he die for it? All alone, with no one to help him? Well, yeah, but if he's lasted this long, he's smart enough to read a keep-out sign. He always was the smart one. Do you think I'll get to talk to him? It doesn't look like it. The radio will be out of range soon. Then I'll go when Jerry goes beyond range. I won't have anything to wait for after that. At first, I was so afraid to die that I was a coward and thought only of myself. Now I see how selfish that was. The terrible thing about dying like this is not that I'll be gone, but that I'll never see them again. Never be able to tell them that I didn't take them for granted. Never be able to tell them that I know of their sacrifices they made to make my life happier. That I know all the things they did for me and that I love them so much more than I could have told them. I've never told them any of those things. You don't tell them such things when you're young and your life is all before you. You're afraid of sounding sentimental and silly. Hey, are you listening to me? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yes, that was very moving. I keep remembering the things they did for me. And it's the little things they did that seem the most important now. Like Jerry, what he did the night my kitten got ran over in the street. I was only six years old. And he held me in his arms and wiped my tears away and told me not to cry. Flossie was going away for a while, just long enough to get herself a new fur coat. And she would be on the foot of my bed the very next morning. I believed him and quit crying and went to sleep dreaming about my kitten coming back. When I woke up the next morning, there was Flossie on the foot of my bed, new fur coat and everything, just like he said she would be. Isn't that amazing? Um, not really. I'm pretty sure your cat just died, and your brother replaced it while you were sleeping. What? Don't be silly. Jerry? It's Jerry now? Jerry Cross? Uh, yes, the bad news, what is it? Hello, Jerry. I wanted to see you. Marilyn? Marilyn, what are you doing on that EDS? I wanted to see you. I wanted to see you, so I hid on this ship. Marilyn! Marilyn, what have you done? It's... it's not... Don't, Jerry. I only wanted to see you. I didn't intend to hurt you. Uh, oh, don't cry, Marilyn. Don't cry, sis. You mustn't do it. It's... it's all right, honey. Everything's gonna be okay. I... I didn't want to go feeling that way. I just wanted to, to say goodbye because I have to go in a minute. Sure, sure. That's the way it's gonna be. Sis, I didn't mean to sound that... I didn't mean to sound the way I did. EDS, have you called Stardust? Did you check with the... Did, did you check with the computers? We called Stardust almost an hour ago. It can't turn back. There are no other cruises within 40 light years. And there isn't enough fuel. Uh, but are you sure that the computers read the... Are, are you sure that they had the correct data? Sure of everything? Yes, Jesus. We already established that several times already. There's nothing else we can do. He tried to help me, Jerry, even if he was a huge dick about it. No one can help me, and I'm not going to cry anymore, and everything is going to be right with you and Daddy and Mommy. Sure it will. We'll make out fine. He's going out of range. He'll be gone within, a, within another minute or so. You're fading, Jerry. You're going out of range. I wanted to tell you, but I can't now. But we must say goodbye soon. But maybe I'll see you again. Maybe I'll come to you in your dreams with my hair in braids and crying because my kitten, the kitten in my arms is dead. Maybe I'll be the touch of the breeze that whispers as you go by. Maybe, at times, I'll be nothing you can see, but you will know I'm there beside you. Think of me like that, Jerry. Always like that and not the other way. Always like that, Marilyn. Always like that and never any other way. Our, our time is up, Jerry. I have to go now. Good... Goodbye, Jerry. Goodbye, little sister. Oh, no. Clarence! Sheesh, that was the sappiest thing I've ever seen. Alright. I'm ready. Ah, did you jettison the stowaway yet? Yes, it's done. She left after she made contact with her brother. Ugh. Damn. That's cold.
situation. 